So, I'm going to start by asking you if you know what sound is, because this is a real interesting question that opens up the approach that I'm going to take. Does anybody know what sound is? Go ahead. So the vibration of air particles? Okay, that's a very technical and mechanical explanation, but it's good, it's accurate. Anyone else? Energy moving through air? Yes, that is also true, that is also true. How about you? Music? Also true, also true. Anyone else? Uh, our perception of noise around us? There you go, now you're getting closer. Now you're getting closer. Go ahead. Exactly. Thank you. Sound is not a thing. It's not a static uh, reality. It's not an objective reality. Uh, it's a perception. Uh, what we hear as sound is basically due to the way our ears work. There's a physical reality, like you said. There's a physical movement of particles through the air but that's just the mechanical aspect of it. What we hear is what our brains are telling us that that sound is. And the reason why this is important to know is because if you have an imagination, and most people do, which is a good thing, <laughs> then you can imagine that sound to be other things, you know? So, for example, if you are an animal, a whale, the frequency that we call high end probably doesn't even exist, you know? But the low end, man, that's a world. That's a world of words and feelings that they have, you know, sensation that they can feel. And the same thing, uh, the same concept can be applied to how we create sounds. Because if you only stick with, okay, I have a guitar, I'm just gonna play a note, or I'm gonna play a part and whatever, and then I'm gonna put a mic in front of it, then you're only capturing one version of that reality. But then if you start thinking, what if I'm a whale? What if I'm a bird? What would I hear in that case? And even if this is just an hypothetical, it's a very interesting hypothetical, you know? Because you start to change your perspective. And that's when you start really coming up with cool stuff, you know? Actually, I think I'm going to ask your help sure. uh, so we can, let's say, stay at a distance like this here. And we have this twig. Okay. And it sounds like this. Okay. But if we go like all the way, I don't know if you can hold it like this. Sure. It's yeah. Like right off the yeah. top. Can you come over here? Can you do that? Yeah. So, but if we point the mic right inside the cello and then we make a note. Is it recording? Mm -hmm. Is the game good? Yeah. yeah. Sure. back that now, I think we will hear something that is slightly different from what we just heard based on our perspective to the instrument. before I go into some uh, sound design and I might try a different step because why not? And I want to keep this here. Too many choices. I don't even know what to pick. Okay, let's try this one. So the tricky part here is that as I'm holding the stick, 
I'm also dampening it. Um, in the video that you saw earlier, you saw this crazy instrument called the Fire Beast, where the sticks are actually drilled inside the body of the cello, so I don't have to touch them. I mean, I can touch them just to pinch the note I want, but uh, it's not dampening it. So, but anyway, this is like the poor version. It's like, this is the pre-Fire Beast, you know, this is <laughs> the concept of it. So one thing that I like to imagine when we do this kind of thing, it's like I imagine like animals, you know, like a little, a woodpecker, a squirrel, or something. Imagine if you leave a violin in the grass and the squirrel comes over and goes, wow, what is that? And then they start doing all kinds of things. That's what they would do, I think. I haven't tried, uh, but I will at some point. I did record a squirrel uh, eating walnuts, though. And I created the impulse response out of that. So I, basically, I, I trained a squirrel to arrive always at the same spot day after day. I was leaving the nuts, the walnuts there every day. And then at some point, when he was ready, and I was ready, I was there with the camera. And I got him at this distance because he knew that I wasn't going to bother him. And, and so he could eat his walnuts in peace and everything. But we got a great sound out of it. And we can also play with the uh, distance. And it flew away. And then there's a different type of uh, stick, kind of a driftwood, hollow, dry. bunch of different elements and I'm sorry for the mess I made here. <laughs> this is a very very unorthodox application in the studio. Okay. Wow, what I would like to try is to take all of these things and start doing some uh, processing on it and see what we can come up with. I like that. I think that's a good uh, a good starting element. It gives me the feeling of uh, nature is just waking up and the first bird goes, what? <laughs> is it day already? Okay. okay, so. I like that. Okay, so one thing that we do right now is we're gonna bounce this element. And it sounds like it's really long, so I'm gonna shorten the tail a little bit. Okay, so I think this is it. What do we call this thing? The elephant's wrath. Live, for the first time in the world. In the world. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, everyone. Thank you for participating in this experiment.